Today we are going to be talking all about different surfaces that are fun to paint mandalas on. Obviously there's no rules when it comes to this. You can paint on anything you'd like. Um, the possibilities are endless, but I'm just going to go through some of the more popular surfaces that you might see online and just show you um, the details and where you can buy them. So first we're going to start off with just natural rocks. That is what I started painting on. This is the first rock that I ever painted. And this was just on a little natural rock that I got from my mother-in-law's front yard. She has some really nice, smooth, round rocks. So I just, she let me grab some out of her front yard and that's what I painted some of my first rocks on. So I used to just find rocks out in nature. Um, we have like a lot of canyons and outdoor stuff here, lots of rivers and lakes. So I was able to find some rocks, but for some reason I always felt a little bit guilty taking natural rocks from nature. So what I ended up doing was I found a landscaping place in my city and they actually let me go and get like a big bucket of rocks for five dollars and i get to pick them out and they have all different types of rocks there that are meant for landscaping and they had like a specific type of rock um, that are river rocks so i would just go pick my own and get a bucket full for five dollars obviously every landscaping place will be different but if you have any near you i definitely recommend seeing if they'll let you pick out some rocks these are both from the landscaping place and they're just perfect for painting nice and smooth so yeah some people think it's dumb to pay five dollars for rocks that you can get on nature but honestly it just made me feel better and the fact that i got to go and pick them out and get all the perfect ones was just a lot easier than trying to hunt them down in nature but if you want something a little more perfect, which mandala painting is all about symmetry and having everything nice and symmetrical, then you might be interested in man-made rocks. So these are made out of plaster. And you can see this one's like a little three inch. And this one is a larger six inch. And these are just so fun to paint because they're so smooth and just perfect circles. So these are amazing for mandala painting. So there are a few options when it comes to the man-made rocks. So you can either buy the molds and buy the plaster and make your own, or you can buy them already made. So if you want to buy the molds and make them yourself, there are a few companies that I highly recommend. Devon Dotting has a lot of amazing molds, a wide variety of different shapes and just different fun items to paint on. So that's Devon Dotting and then Happy Dotting Company also has molds. So I will link both of those in the description of this video if you want to purchase your own molds and then buy the plaster and make them yourself. I'm not the person to ask about how to make them because I don't make my own. I prefer having them already made just because it saves me time. So it's just a preference of if you want to make your own or if you want to buy them already made. If you want to buy them already made, my dad has a shop on Etsy called The Rock Shop Co. And he sells um, a few different variety of size stones and some other like tea light candle holders and fun things. Um, so yeah, it just depends if you want to make your own or if you want to buy your own. Um, I'm going to show you a few different fun items to paint on. So this is a extra large tea light candle holder. This one, I want to say it's six, about six inches. So this one is massive. And this mold came from Devon Dotting, but my dad also sells these in his Etsy shop, 
the Rock Shop Co. Same with all of these. So we have these cute little turtles. I have not painted a turtle yet, but I am anxious to. So a couple different sizes. And then also these trinket bowls. So this is like a cute little trinket bowl. I want to paint one of these for my jewelry because I actually have one of these already, a little trinket bowl in my bathroom for my earrings and stuff and my rings. So I want to paint one of my own to have in there. And same with this. This is a larger one and I want to make one of these to have on my front door for like keys and just random things. So these molds are from Devon Dotting if you want to buy the molds and make your own. Or if you want them already made, you can get them from my dad's shop. He sells them already made just like this. So these are a couple of fun different items. I'll show you a rock that I painted. So this one I think is six inches. This is probably one of my favorite size plaster rocks to paint is the six inch. It's not too big, not too small, but I just love how like perfectly circular they are. And um, Devon Dotting and the Happy Dotting Company, I think they both have like directions on their website of how to pour the plaster and make your own. Um, as well as some videos. I think they have YouTube also. So if I can find that information, I will link it in the description of the video for you guys. And then this is just a small tea light holder. This one's Happy Dotting Company. And you can see the difference in size. So the small one's from Happy Dotting Company. Large one is Devon Dotting. XL, so that's significantly bigger. I'm painting this one um, this week on Patreon, so I'm really excited to teach that class. That'll be fun. So yeah, there are a couple different plaster items that you can paint. If you're on Facebook or Pinterest and looking at other people's artwork, you'll likely stumble across some tea light holders and the little fun like turtles and stuff and man-made rocks. So it's good to know where you can find those. So next we are going to go into some wood options. So I love painting on wood. Here is just like a little thin piece of wood. I use these ones. These I think are eight inch. Yeah, eight inches. I use these ones a lot when I'm teaching my classes um, because they're just like really good for, I guess, beginners for like more practice because they are a little bit flimsier. You can see this one's like even a little bit warped. Like since they're th so thin, they kind of bend a little bit. So they're not the highest quality, which makes them, I feel, perfect for beginners and practicing. And these come in like a big set from Amazon and they're pretty affordable. So I really like these ones for practicing. So again, thinner, and these come in all different sizes. This one's eight inch. I painted this one that was 10 inch. Again, just like a little bit more flimsy, but perfect for practicing and perfect for me teaching classes. And they're really lightweight. So what I did with all of the ones that I taught on Patreon, I put a magnet on the back and stuck them on my fridge and just created a collection of mandala fridge magnets so these are great for that and then if you want something a little more sturdy or high-end and again i will link the amazon links in the description of the video if you guys want to check these out so if you guys have been following my work you might know that i paint large mandalas really large mandalas and I get my wood personally from Nate Co on Etsy and they sell just a little bit, it's higher quality. So these are half inch thick. So very thick compared to these little flimsy guys, if you can see that. So big difference, a lot thicker, 
a lot better quality and Nateco's awesome. They actually created a <clears throat> listing for mandala wood and that wood comes specifically with the center already marked, which makes it so easy and convenient not having to try to figure out how to find the center of wood rounds. So they sell wood rounds from 10 inches up to 36 inches, which is huge. And it's half inch, half inch thick birch plywood. And it's really smooth. And that's what I like most about it is that it doesn't need a lot of prep or anything. It's pretty much just ready to go. Very smooth. Paint goes on smooth, which makes the dots go on smooth. So this is my go-to wood. If you see my mandalas on social media, almost all of them are painted on Nate Co. wood. So that is my go-to, but definitely thicker, better quality, which makes it more expensive. If you do buy from Nate Co., it is way cheaper to do a pack. So they sell individual pieces or a pack of five. The pack of five is ends up being way cheaper per piece of wood. So I definitely recommend doing the pack. And I have a 10% off code with Nate Co. It's T dots. So if you use that code at checkout, you will get 10% off and then it's free shipping on US orders. If you are not in the United States, getting this wood from Nate Co. is not cost efficient. So if you're in another country, what I would recommend is getting on Etsy and searching for unfinished wood rounds. And then there's a filter on Etsy where you can filter by location. And I recommend just looking within your country or even like something local to you and seeing if you can find any local suppliers. That is gonna be your best bet. Um, I don't recommend buying a bunch of wood from another country because it can get really expensive. So definitely try to find something in your area. You can even hop on Google and just Google unfinished wood rounds or unfinished birch rounds and see what pops up on Google. Even check Amazon. Um, I will hop on Amazon and see if I can find some good quality rounds. I feel like they've added more recently there. So I will see if I can find some um, thicker ones and link those in the description of the video. But yeah, unfinished wood rounds is what you want and smoother the better. I also recommend checking your local craft stores and like um, like Home Depot here, home improvement stores. Home Depot and Lowe's sometimes have like larger rounds, um, but specifically the craft stores like here in the US, we have Michaels and Hobby Lobby. Michaels has some wood rounds. Um, they actually have a bunch of different sizes and um, same with Hobby Lobby. So you just really need to go to your local craft store and see what kind of rounds you have. They have all different types of thickness and yeah, that might actually be easiest if you want to check your local craft store first. And then if you can't find them, then Amazon or Etsy are good options. So those are just kind of some of the basic things you can paint on. You can definitely paint on mugs and glassware. So that is another popular thing that you'll probably see on Pinterest or Facebook. And I actually have a whole video on painting mugs. You do have to use a specific type of paint and curing method. So that is a whole video on its own. If you are interested in that video, I will link it in the description below because painting on mugs is so fun. I used to paint mugs all the time and those were actually like one of my best sellers. People love mugs you just have to make sure to use the right paint and cure it properly but yeah those are just some common items that people like to paint mandalas on um if you guys have any questions feel free to leave a comment and we will see you in the next video 
If you are interested in learning more from me, I teach weekly live classes over on Patreon. Once you become a Patreon subscriber, you will have instant access to a library of all of my past classes. I also share other things on Patreon, such as my color palette recipes and exclusive discount codes to your favorite dotting suppliers. There is also a 24 hour group chat where you can interact with myself and the community and share photos of your work and ask questions. And you will also have access to Patreon Messenger where you can message me at any time. All right, I hope to see you guys over on Patreon. Details are located in the description of this video.